Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God's kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts, our thoughts by the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Keep, O Lord, your household, the church, in your steadfast faith and love, that through your grace we may proclaim your truth with boldness and minister your justice with compassion for the sake of our Savior Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from 1 Samuel. Samuel went from Ramah, and Saul went up to his house in Gabeah of Saul. Samuel did not see Saul again until the day of his death. But Samuel grieved over Saul, and the Lord was sorry that he had made Saul king of Israel. The Lord said to Samuel, How long will you grieve over Saul? I have rejected him from being king over Israel. Fill your horn with oil and set out. I will send you to Jesse. The Bethlehemite, for I have provided for myself a king among his sons. Samuel said, how can I go? If Saul hears of it, he will kill me. And the Lord said, take a heifer with you and say, I have come to sacrifice to the Lord. Invite Jesse to the sacrifice, and I will show you what you shall do, and you shall anoint for me the one who I named to you. Samuel did what the Lord commanded and came to Bethlehem. The elders of the city came to meet him with trembling and said, Do you come peaceably? He said, Peaceably, I have come to sacrifice to the Lord. Sanctify yourselves and come with me to the sacrifice. And he sanctified Jesse and his sons, and he invited them to the sacrifice. When they came, he looked on Eliab, Eliab and thought, 
Surely the Lord's anointed is now before the Lord. But the Lord said to Samuel, Do not look on his appearance or on the height of his stature, because of it I have rejected him. For the Lord does not see as mortals see. They look on the outward appearance, but the Lord looks on the heart. Then Jesus, Jesse called Abinabah and made him pass before Samuel. He said, neither has the Lord chosen his, this one. Then Jesse made Shema pass by. And he said, neither has the Lord chosen this one. Jesse made seven of his sons pass before Samuel. And Samuel said to Jesse, the Lord has not chosen any of these. Samuel said to Jesse, are all your sons here? And the, he said, there remains yet the youngest, but he is, in, he is keeping the sheep. And Samuel said to Jesse, send and bring him, for we will not sit down until he comes here. He sent and brought him in. Now he was ruddy and had beautiful eyes and was handsome. The Lord said, rise and anoint him, for this is the one. Then Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed him in the presence of his brothers. And the spirit of the Lord came mightily upon David from the, that day forward. Samuel then set out and went to Ramah. The word of the Lord. Psalm 20, may the Lord answer you in the day of trouble. The name of the God of Jacob defend you. Remember all your offerings and accept your burnt sacrifice. Repent to your heart's desire and prosper all your plans. We will shout for joy at your victory and triumph in the name of our God. May the Lord grant all your requests. Now I know that the Lord gives victory to his anointed. He will answer him out of his holy heaven with the victorious strength of his right hand. Some put their trust in chariots and some in horses, but we will call upon the name of the Lord our God. O oh Lord, give victory to the king and answer us when we call. A reading from Second Corinthians. We are always confident, even though we know that while we are at home in the body, we are away from the Lord. For we walk by faith, not sight. Yes, we do have confidence, and we would rather be away from the body and at home with the Lord. So whether we are at home or away, we make it our aim to please him. For all of us must appear before the judgment seat of Christ, so that each may receive recompense for what he has has been done in the body, whether good or evil. Therefore, knowing the fear of the Lord, we try to persuade others, but we ourselves are well known to God, and I hope that we are also well known to your consciences. We are not commending ourselves to you again, but giving you an opportunity to boast about us so that you may be able to answer those who boast in outward appearance and not in the heart. For if we are beside ourselves, it is for God. If we are in our right mind, it is for you. For the love of Christ urges us on, because we are convinced that once has died for all, therefore all have died. And he died for all, so that those who live might live no longer for themselves, but for him who died 
and was raised for them. From now on, therefore, we regard no one from a human point of view. Even though we once knew Christ from a human point of view, we know him no longer in that way. So if anyone is in Christ, there is a new creation. Everything old has passed away. See, everything has become new. The word of the Lord. Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. You, Lord Christ. Jesus said, The kingdom of God is as if someone would scatter seed on the ground and would sleep and rise night and day. The seed would sprout and grow. He does not know how. The earth produces of itself first the stalk, then the head, then the full grain in the head. When the grain is ripe, at once he goes in with his sickle, because the harvest has come. He also said, With what can we compare the kingdom of God, or what parable will we use for it? It is like a mustard seed, which, when sown upon the ground, is the smallest of all the seeds on earth. Yet when it is sown, it grows up and becomes the greatest of all shrubs and puts forth large branches so that the birds of the air can make nests in its shade. With many such parables, he spoke the word to them as they were able to hear it. He did not speak to them except in parables, but he explained everything in private to his disciples. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Please be seated. My name's Scott Slater, and I serve on the Bishop's staff. I'm delighted to be here with you all this morning. Um, this is actually the first time I've celebrated the Eucharist twice in the same day in almost two years. So, um, like many of us, back teens, uh, sometimes a little rusty. Um, also, just delighted to know that uh, that I here because your rector, Anne, is on sabbatical, and uh, this has been a particularly difficult year for uh, clergy who are running congregations, so we are particularly thrilled that she's able to have some time to rest and to sleep and to not be thinking ahead um, for the next Sunday for, for at least a, a small break. I'm grateful to be serving alongside Frank as your deacon and also 
one of the archdeacons for the diocese. And um, it's just so grateful for the work that you all do here in your local community and for the ways that both Trinity is a congregation, but that also how each of you all embody Christ's presence in your own life. Thank you. Now, a, a question for you as we begin. How many, and you don't have to raise your hand. This is, this is more of a rhetorical question, but how many of you admire people who are persistent in pursuing something important? Think, for instance, of an athlete like Michael Phelps, who grew up close to where I live, or a poet like Amanda Gorman, or an inventor like Thomas Edison. I mean, these people are persistent in order to accomplish what they did. And so persistence by most of us, if not all of us, is seen by, as a virtue, something that we all aspire to as a gift. And so in today's sermon, I want to talk about persistence and how it sort of threads its way into a couple of the lessons. But I also want to talk about failure, and how it also is present in some of our biblical stories today. Now, in our Old Testament reading, we hear from a fairly discouraged prophet. I mean, poor Samuel is a great guy, but the prophet has been tapped by God a second time to help usher in this royal dynasty of the Hebrew people, a dynasty that God was never really crazy about in the first place, if you read a few chapters back, but that God has consented to nonetheless. So the first king of Israel, King Saul, it turns out has ended up being a bit of a dud. And so God has now sent Samuel to anoint a new king, just as Samuel had anointed Saul originally. And so he says, says, says go to the house of Jesse. He has a bunch of sons. Them's going to be the next king, my, my paraphrase. So Jesse, uh, Samuel arrives. Jesse starts bringing out his sons one at a time in a line from to youngest. And they're prayed by Samuel one by one, and yet none are the one that God says, yes, that's the one. So we get through all seven of them, and, we, and you can almost see Samuel getting more and more frustrated as each one comes by. He doesn't want to be there, and now God's not like making it clear who's going to be the one. So they're, they've all gone by, presumably, and Samuel says, is that it? Do you have any more sons that you're not telling us about? And of course, yes, there's, there's one more, the youngest. And so we, we, um, we hear that David, who I, I would paraphrase as sort of being the runt of the litter, so to speak, so somewhat disregard the nice flowery phrase in there about him being ruddy and handsome with the beautiful eyes. That, that may have been true, but... but that, that, that seems like a little bit of an editorial scribe to cover up that he wasn't quite up to the standards of the other brothers, despite, you know, not just because of his age. So in any case, this boy, the shepherd boy, finally comes forward, someone who is probably the least likely in appearance to be someone who could be a mighty warrior. Yes, this is the one. It's clear to Samuel this is the next king of Israel. And so he is the one. Boom. Now, we learn in subsequent chapters that David will soon face his own fear of failure when confronting the Philistine Goliath, for instance. And his persistence in that scene will pay off in big ways, not just in that one confrontation, but many more to come, uh, making him one of the, considered one of the greatest kings of Israel. Well, now fast forward a few hundred years to one of David's um, descendants, another great leader, another persistent leader named Jesus. And Jesus this morning brings to us the story and the image of a mustard seed growing into a great bush. And when I hear this parable, I always think about Thomas Edison, uh, who brought the world hundreds of inventions, many of which were highly innovative including the incandescent light bulb. Now, Edison's success was a direct result of his persistence and his failures. In fact, one could easily argue that Edison was one of the most prolific failures of all time. Let me explain. 
For Edison to finally find the right combination of material and conditions for a filament to not self-destruct after it lights up, he had to fail hundreds and hundreds of times until he find, found that right combination. So to finally succeed, Edison had to be willing to fail hundreds of times and the persistence in the midst of that failure to keep at it. And he finally did succeed, of course, with that and many other inventions. Now, many people don't know that he was good friends with Henry Ford and Harvey Firestone. Ford, of course, created the first mass-produced automobile after many failures of his own. And one of the challenges, once Ford was able to figure out how to mass assemble Model Ts, was then finding enough rubber to produce enough tires to clad the wheels on those Model Ts. And so Ford sought out his friend, Harry, Henry, Harvey Firestone of Firestone Tire fame, who tapped their other friend, Thomas Edison, to figure out how to produce enough rubber to produce all those tires, and did it quickly. So Edison started immediately collecting saplings and seedlings from all over the world uh, to figure out which would produce the most rubber the most quickly. In fact, one of the largest trees in North America is in Fort Myers, Florida, where I, near where I used to live, um, shading his winter laboratory on his winter home property, planted when he was trying to find that plant to help produce tires. Well, now rubber trees go quick. Most rubber trees grow much quicker than other types of trees like we have up north here, but they still don't grow quickly enough to produce enough sap to turn into tires. And so, after experimenting with hundreds of types of flora, the plant that produced the rubber sap was a common weed, a mustard plant. Now, it doesn't seem to make sense, but Hundreds of mustard plants can be planted and grown quickly in one growing season and produce a large volume of sap plant compared to other choices. Now, the irony of this is that, the, is that petroleum ended up being the fastest way to create rubberized tires. And so all the work he did, all that collaboration with Firestone and Ford ended up really not paying off in the end. Now, does that then make Edison's legacy a failure? Of course not. His persistence, not only with that and other things, uh, produced numerous innovations for that time, but he has inspired through his thinking, his critical thinking and creativity, inventors and innovators ever since. And so in his day and age, Edison was not afraid to fail. In fact, it challenged him. It helped him persist. It persuaded him to be more persistent. He had faith in his God-given ability to keep trying and trying despite the odds, despite the failures. Jesus, a simple carpenter from Nazareth, also had that sense of persistence in the midst of many, many um, cultural objections to his ministry. And it's hard for us to remember that his ministry career only lasted about three years, not very much time at all, about a tenth of what I've been doing for my adult life. But that impact was tremendous. It ended what many could see, it ended in a way that many have perceived as a failure, a public and humiliating execution. But again, Jesus, as we know, was a person of persistence. And he passed that spirit of persistence onto his apostles who spread it person to person. And one might say that when we receive the gift of the Holy Spirit at baptism, part of that gift is the gift of persistence that God passes on to us and God wants us to use in our own earth, earthly ministry. But even so, think about the early church. The early church, the first group of of Believers following Jesus' death and resurrection faced failure and failure time and time again for three centuries. That's a lot of failure, but its followers persisted. And so we know from history, and we know even from our own lives, 
in the life of our church is that God, when God plants an idea and that idea take, takes root, it produces not only fruit, but tremendous fruit. We may face such obstacles as failure and discouragement and setbacks, but God's persistent faith in us, which is where that persistence comes from, God's persistent faith in us can move mountains. God has much more faith in us than we will ever have in ourselves. And so one of the ways we can honor God's faith in us is to allow it to germinate, to take root, to allow it to grow and foster and bloom and produce fruit. And that can take time. This pandemic that we've all been living through for the past 15 months has generated lots of opportunities for the church, both the church universal and each congregation, to practice persistence, to experience failures, but to also invite the church to practice experimentation, adaptation, and yes, failure. And our ability to persist, adapt going forward once this pandemic is a, is a part of our past will be impacted by our continuingness to embrace failure as we embrace innovation and adapt ad adaptation. So to remind me of this continuously is, is uh, one last story I want to read to you all, a story that um, I learned when I was the father of young children. It's a book by Ruth Krauss, Krauss called The Carrot Seed. And I was able to find it in my basement this morning before I took off. The little boy planted a carrot seed. His father said, I'm afraid it won't come up. His mother said, I'm afraid it won't come up. His older brother said, it's not going to come up. But every day the little boy pulled up the weeds around the seed and sprinkled the ground with water. But nothing came up. And nothing. Everybody said it wouldn't come up, but he still pulled up the weeds around it every day and sprinkled the ground with water. And then one day a carrot came up just as the little boy had known it would. For those of you who can't focus this far, it's a big carrot, bigger than the boy. If you have faith the size of a mustard seed, you can move mountains. That applies to each and every one of us. If we have that faith, God can do and will do far greater things with us and through us than we could ever dream or imagine on our own. But with that power comes a tremendous responsibility. And God believes and God has faith that each of us possesses that capacity, that persistence, that vulnerability, that ability to embrace failure that will allow us to do great things together as a community of love with the gifts that we have each been given, bring them together and share them amongst ourselves and multiply beyond our walls. And so even when others tell us we can't do it, even when we face repeated failure, God is persistently cheering us on, always believing that we can do more, much more than we could ever ask or imagine for ourselves. And not just for ourselves and for our church, but more than for what the, God, the world can get from us that God has placed in our hands. So people of Trinity, believe in the same way that God believes in you. Trust that God has given you the gifts to do far more than you may feel capable of doing. And then live into that gift. Embrace the failure. Embrace the persistence. But always embrace the love that comes with it. Amen. Amen.
Let us stand and affirm our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Prayers of the people. Father, we pray for your holy Catholic Church. That we all may be one. Grant that every member of the church may truly and humbly serve you. That your name may be glorified by all people. We pray for all bishops, priests, and deacons. That they may be faithful ministers of your word and sacraments. We pray for all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world. That there, there may be justice and peace on the earth. Give us grace to do your will in all we undertake. That our, our works, works may find, find favor in your sight. Have compassion on those who suffer from any grief or trouble, especially our family and friends on Trinity's prayer list. They may, they may be delivered, delivered from, from their, their distress. distress. Give to the departed eternal rest. Let, Let light perpetual shine upon them. We praise you for your saints who have entered into joy. And may we also come to share in your heavenly kingdom. Let us pray for our own needs and those of others. We offer prayers for our families, Doug and Kathy Gorney, Beth Graberitz, Jay, Jill, Cody, Hope, Hanchi, Rick, Stephanie, Hannah, and Clara Havro. We offer prayers for our frontline workers during this COVID-19 crisis. Michelle, Beverly, Vic, Allison, Catherine, Carl, Victoria, Victor, Brandy, Joey, Jimmy, Kendall, Mark, Robin, Brian, Amelia, Josh, Adam, Sarah, Tori, Caitlin, John, Ben, Melanie, Jennifer, Caitlin, Kai, Joseph, Amy, Becca, Brittany, Mike, Kathy and Nicole. We offer prayers for our military and their families. Anthony, Anna Marie, Vincent, Brian, Jerome, 
Beth, Grant, Patrick, Jonathan, Walter, Justin, Cameron, Adrian, Brad, Cody, Josh, Ben, David, Kevin, Jerry, Danielle, and Luke. We offer prayers for our college students, Ben, Martha, Zach, Virginia, Gabrielle, AJ, Anna, Joshua, JT, Lydia, Ashley, and Joe. Let's say together the prayer for Trinity. Heavenly, Heavenly Father, Father, we thank, thank you for calling us into your service. service. Our, our mission is to invite others to be a part, part of our community, inspiring them to have a deep and abiding relationship with you, and to serve, and to serve all in your name. Help, Help us, us to respond to that, to that call wholeheartedly, and lead us boldly into the future. Through Jesus, Jesus Christ, Christ our Lord. Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most, Most merciful, merciful God, God, we confess, confess that, that we have sinned, sinned against you, you in thought, word, word and, deed, and deed, by what, what we have done and by, and by what, what we have left, left undone. undone. We have, we have not, not loved, loved you with our whole heart. heart. We, have we have not loved, loved our neighbors, neighbors as ourselves. We are, we are truly, truly sorry and humbly, and humbly repent. repent. For the, For the sake of your Son, Son Jesus, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive, and forgive us, that we may delight in your will, will and walk, walk in your ways to the glory, glory of your name. name. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. Please stand. May the peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Morning. Well, good morning. First of all, let me say a special word of thanks to Canon Scott Slater for being with us this morning. Great message. Thank you. Um, we need to hear that more often. Uh, uh, Scott has a, um, an interesting title. It's called, he's the Canon to the Ordinary. Um, that means that Scott has to know before the bishop does what the bishop is supposed to do, when he's supposed to do it, and he makes sure that the bishop in fact does it. <laughs> is that a pretty accurate description of your job, Scott? Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. <laughs> so thank you. Thank you for being here this morning. I, I've also been the, the, the COVID response coordinator the last 15 months, so I'm, I'm looking forward to retiring from that job. <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty thankless, actually. Actually, it's, it's I get a lot of good feedback, but it's 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 one of those jobs you want to work your way out. Yeah, right. Um, one announcement: I want to make sure that um, everyone who hasn't filled out the survey uh, about uh, COVID vaccinations and about you know thinking, um, you know the kinds of things that would help us make decisions about which restrictions to lift. Um, so if you haven't filled out that survey, please do that, because we'd like to have every member of the congregation uh, fill out the survey so that we will be able to do some planning. And actually, um, so I'll be able to send a plan to Scott, who will give us permission to do um, to lift some some of our restrictions. So. Uh, please fill out the survey and, and leave it for us. Or uh, I think Denise also sent out um, uh, an email this week. You can also fill it out online as well. Um, are there other announcements that need to be made this morning? 
All right, then how about birthdays? JJ. Today. I'm sorry? Two Geminis. <laughs> Are there other birthdays? Her name is Judy, right? Okay. And J Days is yours is this coming Saturday, right? All right, let's let's say a birthday prayer for Judy and JJ. Heavenly Father, we give you thanks for uh, for JJ and for Judy. For JJ for being a wonderful member of this congregation. We ask your blessings on both of them as they enter another year of of their lives. May it bring them happiness and peace and joy. In Christ's name we ask this. Amen. How about wedding anniversaries? All right. Then walk in love. Has loved us. An offering for us. An, an offering and sacrifice to God. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Lift them up, Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. For you are the source of light and life. You made us in your image and called us to new life in Jesus Christ, our Lord. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name.
We give thanks to you, O God, for the goodness and love which you have made known to us in creation, in the calling of the children of Abraham to be your people, in your words spoken through the prophets, and above all, in the word made flesh, Jesus, your Son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory. And we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice, that we may be acceptable through him, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ, and bring us to that heavenly country where with all your saints we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters through Jesus Christ our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation. By him, and with him, and in him in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine, thine is the, the kingdom, kingdom and the, the power and the, and the glory, glory forever, forever and, ever. and ever. Amen. Alleluia. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us the gifts of God for the people of God, the body of Christ for you, the body of Christ. Body of Christ, we go to heaven. 
the body of Christ, the bread of life. Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly, Heavenly Father, Father, you have graciously accepted us, us as living members of your Son, Son our, our Savior, Savior Jesus, Jesus Christ. Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send, send us now into the world in peace, and grant us strength, strength and courage. Love, love and serve you with, with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ, Christ our, our Lord. Lord. Amen. Amen. The peace of God which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of God's Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you this day and remain with you forever. Amen. Amen. Thank you.
Hallelujah, hallelujah. Let us go forth into the world rejoicing in the power of the Spirit. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you.